Hi, Jeremy Cordo in the Court of Public Opinion. I'm just on air here to let you know that we'll be live streaming the Court of Public Opinion every Friday between 9 o'clock and 12 on jeremycordo.com. Please join us. We'd love to have you. And welcome to Monday. Welcome to the garage, the court of public opinion. I'm Jeremy Cordo. Peter Clayton is behind the camera. Hope you had a good weekend. Weather here is lovely. I don't know about where you are. It's a bit patchy when you look all over Australia, but I guess that's climate. The weather is fairly unpredictable. I only tell in the morning, really, quite honestly, reliably, by looking out of the window. Can't beat that. Uh, Cross Lotto, Powerball, really, eye-watering $200 million jackpot this week. Pete, did you have a ticket? I already got mine for next week as well. Well, I had a ticket last week. Yes. I'll get a ticket for this week. Yeah, yeah I'm ready to go. Yeah, I think probably it's going to be more than $200 million because the $200 million was calculated on every second person or every third person getting a ticket. I think everyone will have a go. Why not? I mean, it's possible. You know, the, 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 the chance of winning $200 million is, is as I said, eye-wateringly interesting. $200 million. If you got a ticket, good luck. Good luck. Good luck, Pete. Yes. Uh, the Tamworth Country Music Festival is uh, on over the weekend. Uh, before I die, I want to go and have a look at that. Me too. Up close. Pete, I'm, I'm surprised that you don't go there, and, and uh, every year, in fact, with your mm. repertoire of songs, and you, you write them and all the rest. Why haven't you done that? You've not done it. No, I haven't done it, but I, I keep... <laughs> Promising myself I will. It's the only showcase country music has. Yes. Oh, I think we should perhaps go next year, you and I. Okay. It's a deal. Road, road trip. All right. It's a deal. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how that would work out. <laughs> I don't know. I heard this guy on Seven News on Friday on citizenship. I think I've got this right. We have to change, evolve. Yep, 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 I get it. We all should. People come to Australia in ever greater numbers and they don't. They don't change. They're not asked to change. They don't have to change. They don't think they have to change. So why do we, I wonder? Why do we have to change? I don't get that. When I go into somebody's home, I don't rearrange the furniture. When in Rome, do as the Romans. It's an old, reliable saying. This government, I was going to say, doesn't support Australian values. It's not even interested in Australian values. Hence, they preside over a situation where 70% of migrants have never heard of Australian values. So why are we confused when they don't get it? A bit later on, I want to show you a shocking attack by black girls on a white girl with Down syndrome. We can put it in now if you like. Can you put it in yeah, now? we can put it in now. Well, let's do that because okay. I do want to talk to you about it and it's probably going to be more impactful if we could perhaps put the vision in so now. that you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't seen it already, I suspect you probably would have. A woman with Down syndrome set upon by two teenagers. Their violent attack filmed by friends. Oh, oh. Okay. 
The attack occurred at Southern Cross Railway Station in Melbourne. The assault would have continued except for an elderly man who intervened at his own peril. These shocking, awful kids were so proud of what they did they recorded it and they posted it on social media. Brazen. No fear of being caught or what the consequences might be. Reminds me a bit of those people who used to run around, probably still do, I don't know, running around Melbourne with hammers in jewellery shops, just going in and smashing the counters. They didn't even attempt to disguise themselves. I wonder what ever happened to them. Did anyone get them? apprehend them? I would also like to point out that the media reports that I heard yesterday morning did not mention that the assailants were black. Why? Why? It's a vital factor in recognizing, finding and bringing them to justice. Now that might be different when they, the television stations run the, the, the footage. I don't know. A courtesy of the thugs who did this, of course. But clearly, uh, the police need uh, the height, the sex, the age, and the obvious distinguishing characteristics, the colour, nationality maybe, of the alleged assailants. Important, very important, important information. What is the media frightened of? Is it frightened? Is it woke? Is it politically correct? Please give me a break. It's okay to say that the victim was Down syndrome, but not to accurately describe the alleged criminals. I don't get it. Don't get it. Don't agree with it. Uh, speaking of double standards, um, congratulations to the New South Wales Police who were quick to intervene and arrest those who were involved in a demonstration or planned, proposed demonstration, a demonstration of so-called white socialist supremacists. As they first met and then they tried to travel by train into the city to demonstrate on Australia Day chanting their anti-Semitic hate speech all the way. Quick, good action by the police. Now, I wish we could have similarly vigilant and astute behaviour on the part of the authorities when it comes to what goes on in mosques all over the country. I'm told by Muslim friends that anti-Jewish and anti-Israel hate speech is quite common. Quite common, regularly preached, particularly by visiting imams and muftis. Now, I've never been to a mosque, so I can't tell you that firsthand, but that's what I've been told. But for God's sake, look, hate speech is hate speech. Always was, always will be. This is the new war cry from Aboriginal activists and Aboriginal white activists and demonstrators. Oh yes, they've added, um, they've added Palestine. Always was, always will be. And this, funnily enough, was a statement that showed up on a slide on the ABC in their promotion for preparation for Australia Day, which was nothing more than a, a pro-Aboriginal activist rant. Anyway, that's a, another story and we went there last Thursday. But I've had it. I think some of these ungrateful takers and they are basically benefiting from the largesse of white man's taxes 
huge amounts of taxpayers' money, huge, huge amounts of money are taken and wasted. And I don't think much of it gets to the ordinary Aboriginal man, woman or child. But no acknowledgement from these people, the activists I mean, no acknowledgement or gratitude. It's a disgrace. And the Australia Day lead up, statues destroyed and defaced in Melbourne, Captain Cook cut down by Aboriginals or, or anti-colonial types, activists. Where would Aboriginals be without the colonial taxpayer? Well, I know you got on perfectly well for 60,000 years, but it doesn't seem like you can do it now. I don't know why that is. This whole thing makes me angry, as you can possibly tell. We would be well advised to just stop the money. But can you see this government doing that? No. No. I can't. But we've got plenty to say about them. Um, but on the subject of Australia Day, if we had a plebiscite, we did have a plebiscite over gay marriage. I think Australia Day is universally more important than gay marriage. It, it really does affect everyone. Gay marriage didn't. But let's have a plebiscite on Australia Day. Not another referendum too bloody expensive, but a plebiscite. But we can make it more economical. But decide once and for all. I know the overwhelming majority will vote for Australia Day to stay where it is because it's got nothing to do with invasions or anything else. It's the Nationality and Citizenship Act of 1949 that we are celebrating the day we became a nation, which is reason to celebrate. But even if we were to win this plebiscite, would that shut up this noisy minority? Like the voice, they'll bang on. But let's have a plebiscite and put a few other questions. Now, you might be able to help me with this. I was thinking, uh, what day should Australia Day be on? Uh, nuclear power for Australia? Yes or no? I think we should say cheap nuclear power for Australia. Because, God, we are one of the countries most blessed with those reserves. We could incorporate the flag. I mean, do you really want three flags? Can you think of anything else we need to put in there? Pete, can you think of anything? No. What about daylight saving? No, no I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm not. Mm. Uh, I still know. I'm, I, I'm sure it fades the curtain. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I just don't like the idea of all the clocks that you have and the little timepieces that you have. And Twice a year you've got to go around and change them all. Yes, that's annoying. For it nothing. Is. It is annoying. Or how about, do you want cheap electricity or expensive renewables? Now there's a choice. I know what you'd say. I know what I'd say. Congratulations again to all the Australia Day Award winners including about 1,000 Orders of Australia recipients. Well done. And this year, because you've got, I think, another chance leading up to the King's birthday, because it's Australia Day and King's birthday, you uh, can nominate people. And if you know anyone who's deserving, particularly somebody who's sort of under the radar or unsung, I think it would be a really nice thing uh, beholden upon all of us that we should do that recognize people the more the better i do have one for the plebiscite tell me do we want a large population oh, do yeah. we want a big australia or do we want to leave it where it is well you can never leave anything the, the way it is but you, you you know a contained population cut migration do we want a population policy let's say we we okay. we settle on a figure that we know we can support contain and sustain. That would make sense. But you're right, it, it's, it's totally rampant. If I've got a little more time, a new high, or should I say low, in political spin, the arrogance of our Prime Minister, 
just like the voice. He barrels on regardless. I'll convince them. Yes, I know I promised the stage three tax cuts, but hey, <laughs> I found a better way. Well, I don't care how he tries to spin it. The Prime Minister told a lie. And I'm sick of it. Bob Hawke. I know about this one because he told me, face to face. I will not devalue or float the dollar if elected tomorrow. That was on the Friday. First thing he did was to devalue the dollar, float the dollar, devalue the dollar. Gillard and the carbon tax. Malinowskis, I'll stop the ramping. Really? Tony Albanese, my word is my bond. Lies. Lies. Which will not generate any respect from the people. John Howard had integrity. He wanted a consumption tax, a contentious consumption tax. It's what cost the Libs the previous election when somebody couldn't explain a um, birthday cake. You might remember that. And what components of the birthday cake would be subject to consumption tax. Anyway, they lost that election. John Howard wanted a consumption tax. He didn't impose it when he won that election. He took it to the people at the next election. This is what I want, he said. Vote for me and I'll do it. That is integrity. Pure and simple. Thank you so much for viewing the Court of Public Opinion, ladies and gentlemen. Let me give you a couple of birthdays. And I wish you a very happy birthday. Oh, where do I get my glasses? I did remember to bring them. Very important. Uh, it is the 29th. Uh, New Zealand was founded in 1840 on this day. Happy birthday, New Zealand. Uh, Chekhov, Russian playwright, was born 1860. Ice cream. The ice cream cone was patented by Carl Taylor of Ohio on this day in 1924. Happy birthday to Rodney Rood and Oprah Winfrey. Paul Newman and Joan Wood, Wood got married. Uh, tonight, hosted by Steve Weizard, debuted on Australian television, 1990. It was very good, actually. Steve Weizard was very clever. But the Steve Weizard Tonight Show was an absolute mirror image of Tonight with David Letterman. I mean, the whole, he copied all the mannerisms and even, you know, throwing the pencil through the window. And oh, you'd have to see both of them to get what I mean. But it was really pretty childish. I would have thought Steve was a lot more original than that. Carl Benz issued a patent for his motor carriage in 1886. Wow. And they're still going. I don't think they're quite as pretty as they used to be, but that's just me. Victor Mature was born in Kentucky in 1916. John Forsyth was born in New Jersey in 1918. Catherine Ross was born, 42. Jimmy Durante died. He was 86. Nicknamed Schnozzles. Jimmy Durante. Yes. Was he the one who said, a man who hates children and kicks dogs can't be all bad? Oh, no, 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 that was W.C. Fields. I've got my comedians wrong. No, Snossel's Durante was different, different kettle of fish. Ah, uh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Alan Ladd died in 1964. Claudine Langer was born, long-time lover of Andy Williams, along with Princess Margaret, by the way. I wouldn't tell just anybody that. Only you. Ian Meldrum was born, 1946. The Victoria Cross, Britain's highest military decoration, was instituted by Queen Victoria from melted-down cannons. 
It came from the Crimean War. And it still is where they source the metal for the prized Victoria Cross. 1856. Happy birthday to David Sabine. In 1943 he was born. Uh, Sir Ninian Stephen was sworn in as Governor General of Australia in 82. Tom Selleck was born in 45. We're the same age. Oh, hell, look at that. W.C. Fields. He was born in Philadelphia. He died at 67 in 1946, but he was the one who said, Man who hates dogs and... No, not, hates children and kicks dogs. <laughs> Can't be all bad. <laughs> but people laughed, you know. Where is our sense of humour these days? You couldn't get away with saying that these days. Germaine Greer, born in 1939, and the feast day of St. Francis of the Sales, patron saint of writers and journalists. God, journalists need not only a patron saint, they need a kick up the bum. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for viewing the Court of Public Opinion. I'm Jeremy Cordo. Peter Clayton is behind the camera. We'll see you tomorrow with another edition of the Court of Public Opinion. Believe in yourself and goodbye for now. Hi, Jeremy Cordo in the Court of Public Opinion. I'm just on air here to let you know that we'll be live streaming the Court of Public Opinion every Friday between 9 o'clock and 12 on jeremycordo.com. Please join us. We'd love to have you.